Welcome back to Lisa's Family Table. I am so excited because we have a special guest with us today. I grew up in Michigan and it's my hometown, my home state, I should say. And Lois, my dear, dear friend Lois, we met at the World Food Championship and she's from Michigan. And she's also a top 10 world dessert champion. And we became very good friends, best friends, coming out of the World Food Championship. And so she and I were talking about it. When I grew up, one of the things that was a childhood favorite for mine was what was called a Michigan pasty. As is with all of these sort of, you know, regional specialties, they have an origin to them, right? And this one originated as immigrants came into the United States to make a better life for themselves. Um, in Michigan, they immigrated there to work in the mines and Cornish and Finnish immigrants brought this from their homeland, right? So they made these savory meat pies, they're called pasties, and they used to carry them in the mine with them. And if it was a cold day in the mine, they would actually put it on their pickaxe or on their shovel and put it over um, the, the headlamp to heat it through. So the beauty of this recipe is my friend Lois has recreated this childhood memory and she's utilized our Lisa Steak Rub, LSR. And I have to say, not only does it take me back to my childhood, but it's so much better because of the, the creative additions that she's done for it. And we really wanna bring this to you in hopes that you'll make it for your family. Okay, and traditionally in pasty meat, um, you only season it with salt and pepper. And it's a mixture of ground beef, and you've got your vegetables, you've got your rutabaga, your carrots, and your potatoes and onions. But I did add the LSR to it, and Lisa's going to post the recipe. But then I took my pie crust, and I used an already pie crust. This is also a Michigan product uh, from Ackett's Pie Company. It's their already ready-to-roll pie crust. You can use anything for people who do not live near Michigan, do not have this product. I do make my own pie crust, but not everybody can do pie crust, so please get in the kitchen and bake. Very simple, we're going to laminate this pie dough. And tell them what laminate is, because well, I have to say, I am not a baker, as okay, you know. Okay, you know what puff pastry is, correct? Yeah. And croissants, well those are laminated doughs, and basically they've got the different layers of butter, and it's all about the folding, and it takes forever to do. But I discovered this little technique a few years ago, um, and it worked, and I'm like, wow. So it's something that I just kind of happen to do. And I'm going to unroll my dough, and mm. then I cut up some fresh rosemary today, and I mixed a little of the LSR and some salt in it. So first I'm going to put rosemary over the whole crust. Then in this bowl here, I have ice cold vodka. And I use vodka in my pie crust, but just to help with these flaky layers, I'm gonna dip my fingers in it and just kind of go over the crust. And I have to say, the first time she told me about the vodka, well, can you taste it? Does it? No. And it really, you can't taste it, but it really does make the dough And then I will flakier, repeat. Right? Right, and I'll repeat. It does make it flakier, and when I make pie crust, I don't use water, I use vodka. Right, because so, I've heard of some people using vinegar, but vodka works so much better, right? It does work better, because it dissipates and it lets you get those flaky layers. I've got the dough all laminated, mm -hmm. and I'm going to move this, I'll move mm -hmm. that, and I'm just redoing it back into a disc. Yeah. Now, to make it's the pasty, wow. okay, so you want to roll it out, I'll use my own terminology, about yay thin. You don't want it too thin, but it's you don't like want it overly... like about an eighth of an inch? About an eighth of an inch. It needs a little more right here. It's a little thicker there. Yep. Yeah. But we're going to use a template. And I'm going to cut out my rounds. Mm -hmm. Now at home, and I forgot to bring it, I've got the coolest little pie cutter. I'll bring it when I come back in August. Is it a big one like this? No, it's a measuring stick thingy, and it's, yeah, oh, it's really cool. Oh, to measure the circumference. Exactly. Yeah. Because, you know, that, I think that's the key with baking mm -hmm. in general. Now, hand it's, me some of the ground very beef. much a science. But this meat's going in raw, so this is going to cook for about an hour and 15, well, hour 20. Those cooked for about, because they were we quite large, some. about an hour 20 minutes at 350 degrees. Yeah. But yes, the meat does go in raw. And so I I'm, thought that was fascinating because, you know, like a dumpling, I've seen some dumpling recipes where the meat is cooked, some where it's not. Mm -hmm. The empanadas I make, the meat is already pre-cooked. And this and is already seasoned, seasoned right. beautifully. And speaking of Michigan, she brought these carrots. Tell, tell them about this company. Oh, there's that does another these. company in Michigan. Um, that's what I'm making your cherry pie with later. Yeah. It's called Michigan Farm to Freezer. And what they have done is they we have a lot of 
fruit farms in Michigan, vegetable farms, and they go out and they have contracts with these different farmers and they get the fruit and they are processed in their plant in mm -hmm. Detroit's Eastern Market and flash frozen. So you want to pick it so up. Just like you would an empanada. Just like you would an You're empanada. pushing the meat in. I'm pushing the meat in and then I'm giving it a little pinch. And, and I think the key here is you don't you won't, don't want to overstuff or understuff, right? No, so, because a couple of those were overstuffed and they're, yeah. they're, yeah. Well, and the meat is going to shrink a bit. So you right. do want to have enough where you can pull the dough together right. so it's not a lot of air pockets in there. Correct. Oh, there's no air yeah. pockets in here. So then I'm and you sealing could take them. a fork and crimp it if you, you want. You could, but I'll fold over the corners. Oh, you're going to do that way like a And an then empanada. I'll do like a rope. I yeah, just, like a rope. I like the rope. I just pinch and yeah. go and pinch and I just keep twisting and this one's turning out oh, very nice. Oh, that's gorgeous. It's doing gorgeous. It. I so love fancy. it when it works. <laughs> yeah. It's so wow. wonderful. Then I've got some burger that's there. Okay. That's okay. It'll, it'll bake. It'll, it's going to give extra flavors. So we showed you earlier how we were focusing today, May is Michigan month, and we were making a regional specialty that has um, its roots in our immigrants coming to our country. It's called a pasty. It's a savory meat pie. And we showed you how we put the meat together. We talked about how you can use some pre-made crust. And make we're it gonna, your own. Yeah, and you can make it, your, make it own your own with the laminating. And we're gonna post where you can buy this if you don't wanna buy something locally. Um, we're also, we also showed you how we rolled them, and I thought your rolling came out perfect with it. Oh no, didn't it? it I love it when it, it, it turns gorgeous. out. It was gorgeous, yes, it was it, gorgeous. It's always a good thing. But of course, Lois made some earlier. And so we just kind of plated them a little bit. So you can see the laminated dough, gives it so much more character. Um, we were thinking to ourselves, if I'm going into the mines, I just wrapped it in some paper, because I'm imagining, and of course they probably wouldn't have red and white paper, but they would have probably wrapped it in some newspapers, some napkins. And probably just, newspaper, or, I would think. Or a, dish, or a tea towel, you know, dish towel, and wrapped it in. And ironically, they either ate it with some beef gravy, or they ate it with some ketchup, and we have we have Lisa's ketchup from Red Gold. Red Gold tomatoes. Yes, and Red Gold comes from Indiana, which is a neighbor of Michigan. So correct, yes. correct. Yep. Now you. I'm excited to taste the dough. Oh yes, you are. Of course you are. Yeah. Because it has. Look, look. Look at that. Look at the carrots in there and the rutabaga. Look yeah. at how beautiful that turned out. You can get your kids to eat their vegetables, right? Yes. Now my husband likes his pasty with beef gravy. This is an ongoing fight in our home. <laughs> the traditional Upper Michigan way is with ketchup people. But if you'd like I would probably gravy, be a beef gravy person. If you like I beef would gravy, be. I would still love you like I still love my husband. Yeah, I would probably so. be a beef gravy. But I like ketchup, especially when it's red gold. So we're going to try it. I'm going to just put it on the plate and, and we're going to go plate, in. We're going to take a bite. Yeah. Okay, put that. Oh my God. I can taste the rosemary. Mm -hmm. I can taste the LSR. Mm -hmm. It's the perfect complement. The dough is incredible. You couldn't this get really a better dough good. if you made this on your own. You really, truly couldn't. No, and pie crust can be a pain in the butt. Oh, it's, it's, it's super flaky. I wish you were here, you could see all the little flakes. I'm gonna taste it now without any ketchup. Okay. I'm not really a ketchup person, traditionally. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love the vegetables, they're tender. You use the perfect amount of LSR because I can taste but it's not overbearing. Like, it's not overbearing. So with the LSR, the thing that I love about it, we call it our steak rub, but it really should be called an all-purpose all purpose because we use Definitely. it for our roasted vegetables. It, it has black garlic in it. It has roasted garlic in it. It has salt, pepper. It has all of this umami in it. And I can taste that coming through on this dish. It's really pretty fabulous. You did a great job on making well, this you. childhood thing. Thank you. I love for me. making it. It takes for me you. home. So, anyway, we hope you enjoyed this um, episode today. We hope you enjoy our regional visits that we're taking. And we hope that you will also try this wonderful recipe that you've recreated and taken me back home. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I love coming here and cooking in your kitchen. I love having you here. From our table to yours, thank you for coming. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you can get notification of our upcoming videos. We post every Thursday and you won't wanna miss a single video.